This morning we listen to God's Word for this special Sunday of Holy Trinity. Following our lessons today, we'll invite the younger children forward for the children's message. First lesson today from Isaiah chapter 6. How does the triune God save people? It's been said he saves them by law and gospel. The law which shows us our sin and our own weakness and our need for God. And the gospel which shows us his love and deliverance and his work in Christ. Those thoughts are conveyed to us in this lesson from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and a train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson today from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 14. How does the triune God save? The work of the Holy Spirit, who brings people to faith and makes them co-heirs with Christ, our Savior. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit again that makes you a slave to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba. Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Alleluia, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. Alleluia. Our Gospel lesson today from John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Again, how does the triune God save us? We can't do it by ourselves. God had a plan. The plan was to send his son. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have 
eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now like to invite the younger children forward for today's children's message, and then following our message, we'll join in the hymn of the day, number 445, through Jesus' blood and merit. Morning, everybody. So, I brought uh, something with me today. Maybe you know what this is. You know what it is? Yeah, it's a stand. It's a stand for paper, a music stand. You could put, like if you were playing a piece of music or singing a song, you could put the music right here so you could uh, see it while you, were, while you were singing or playing. But the part of it that I'd like to talk to you about is the part that we hardly ever think about. We think about a music stand, and that is the bottom part. Because if you look at this, these are the little legs. How many legs are there? You know? Let's see. Three legs, yeah. There's three legs. One, two, three legs. But just there's just one stand, but there's three legs. Now, what do you think would happen if I broke one of these legs off and tried to have it stand up? What do you think would happen? It would fall down. What if I broke two of the legs off? It would still fall down. Yeah, that's exactly right. You need all three legs to hold this up, right? So there's three. But there's only one stand. It's not a perfect analogy, but it does remind us a little bit of who God is. God is the one who's holding everything together. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We just said there's three persons in one God. God the Father, each of them is so important for us, right? When we think of God the Father, we think of God's the one who created me, God's the one who takes care of me, right? When we think of God the Son, we always think about Jesus, right? Jesus died for me on the cross because I'm a sinner and I need his forgiveness. And then God the Holy Spirit, we have a picture over there, a little banner with a dove that kind of reminds us of the Holy Spirit. We started talking about him last week, didn't we? How Jesus was going to send the Holy Spirit and to bless his people. The Holy Spirit lives in us, gives us faith. So we need all of them, right, to hold us together and to hold this world together. Three persons and one God. And what, a, what a neat thing today that we can celebrate who God is. Let's say a prayer together today. We'll fold our hands. Dear Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for all your blessings that you give us every day, even though we don't deserve them. Yet you are so good to us. Thank you for revealing yourself to us so we can know you, trust in you, love you, and worship you our whole life until we look forward to being with you someday in heaven. We pray this day in your name. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Word of God for our meditation this morning is recorded in John chapter 14, beginning in verse 23. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of God. Dear friends in Christ, our risen and ascended Lord, it's graduation time. Luther High School, 
has graduation today. Manola had it on Friday night. McCrestland has graduation next Sunday. All the colleges pretty well have had graduation ceremonies already. Graduation is a big deal. If you attend a graduation service or commencement exercise, as it's often called, you'll hear a graduation speaker. You hope that he's good. Not too long-winded, especially on a hot day like today. Some speakers are well-known, some not so much. Some speakers are very good, some uh, mediocre. But the main thing a commencement address will present to the graduates is advice for their future lives. Today in our text, we hear from the greatest speaker of all time, and that's Jesus Christ, who has some great advice for his disciples, and at the same time, great advice for all of us in our future lives. He tells us to show love, cling to the Holy Spirit's teachings, and be at peace. So give your attention this morning to a great commencement address. You need to show love. Graduation can be an emotional experience. It's emotional for families, especially emotional for the graduates themselves. Because they've been going to that school for four years or more, and during that time they've developed some very close friendships. They also may have developed special respect for some of their teachers. But now comes the parting of the ways. Everyone going off in their own direction. And that can cause some high emotion. There was high emotion in the upper room the night before Jesus' death, as Jesus gathered with his disciples. It was emotional for Jesus, as he had the last supper with his disciples. It was emotional for the disciples, because they knew that their Lord and Master would soon be leaving them. He had told them that. They'd miss him. That bothered them. And so Jesus then, beside giving them advice, did have some words of encouragement and consolation for them. And he told them to show love. Well, he himself was the epitome of love. And that showed at the cross. Later on, Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. Jesus showed the greatest love of all when he gave his life for his friends, his disciples, and us. He suffered and died on the cross to make full payment for all of our sins, something you and I could never do. And he did that out of love. And so it's only fair that we return love to him. And so he says, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. That's only right that we return love to him. We need to have love for him, but then also to show love for him. And we show love for him when we show love to other people. Scripture says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We prove our love in action by showing kindness, understanding, compassion, helpfulness to other people. That's the spirit of Christ who first loved us. The great commencement speaker urges us to claim to the Holy Spirit's teachings. A commencement speaker will often tell the graduates that they should hang on to to what they've learned. Because in those four years, they would have learned a lot of things. And they can use it in different ways. Now, some will be going on to further schooling. Some will learn a trade. Some will enter the military service. 
So that will enter the workforce. In all these cases, whole they can put to use some of the things they've learned. And Jesus wanted his disciples to hang on to what they learned from him during the last three plus years of training that they received. That would mean they loved him, they would hold on to his teachings. They go together. He says here, if you does not love me, will not obey my teaching. You see, love for the Lord and faithfulness to his word go hand in hand. Now sometimes our Christian religion is criticized because we are exclusive. We exclude those who do not believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We're inclusive in that Jesus died on the cross for all people, but you need to believe in him. Now, that goes against the grain of modernism, which stresses things like inclusiveness and diversity. And there are many who would say, hey, it doesn't matter what you believe. Just show love. It does matter. Because if you truly love the Lord, you will be faithful to his word. You will cling to the Holy Spirit's teachings. Love and confessionalism go together. Now along that same line, Jesus had told his disciples, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, we all, all want to be Jesus' disciples, don't we? And we want true spiritual freedom? Well, to have that and keep that, we need faithfulness to him and his word. We need to cling to the Holy Spirit's teachings. And we get some help with that. The Holy Spirit. Here Jesus said to his disciples, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Disciples had a lot to remember. All those things they learned from their master. And they were worried that when they be on their own, they might forget many of those things. On their own, they might say the wrong thing. They might blow it. But Jesus promised that they would not be alone. He would send the Holy Spirit. He helped them remember all those truths. He empowered them. He guided them. And on Pentecost Day, this promise was fulfilled. As you heard last Sunday, in a remarkable way, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the disciples who preached powerful messages of God's word through which the Holy Spirit converted many people. And then following that, the Holy Spirit guided these apostles in their life and in their ministry, as he still guides us today. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. And in our text, we see all three persons of the Trinity revealed. Jesus, the Son, said he prayed to the Father, who would then send the Holy Spirit. And there are many other passages like this, sections in the book of John alone, where all three persons of the Trinity are revealed. And that substantiates our basic faith in the triune God. The Father who created us, the Son who redeemed us by his blood, the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us through word and sacrament. So still today, this triune God, this true God, is active. And we can pray to the Father, like in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. We can put full trust in the Son, Jesus Christ, and his loving sacrifice on the cross for our salvation. And we can use God's word and sacraments through which the Holy Spirit works in our hearts to keep us on the right path. To help us cling 
to the Holy Spirit's teachings. Now finally, the great commencement speaker tells us to be at peace. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Well, Jesus knew a thing or two about peace, that he's called the Prince of Peace. He established peace between us and God. In the warfare between sinful mankind and the Holy God, did that play a sacrifice on Calvary's cross that brought peace. And note that here he calls it my peace. And he says it's different than the kind of peace the world features. Now all of us want world peace. But it's flimsy. It's hard to achieve consistently. And we're constantly hearing about turbulence in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, hot spots all over the world where violence rages. And there are those acts of terrorism and threats of terrorism all over the world, including our own country. There are shootings we hear about almost daily. You can talk about world peace. You can even pray for it. But don't count on it. But you can count on peace with God. That's real. Because it's based on the forgiveness of sins, which is very real. It's prepaid. It's purchased in advance by Jesus Christ, shedding his blood to redeem us. And the result of that is we are reconciled to God. We know we are loved by God. We are at peace with him. A commencement speaker will often try to paint a rosy picture for the graduates as they go on into the world. At the same time, may very well speak of some of the challenges that life brings. Life is not a cakewalk. And that might, speaker might warn them of some of the stress that they may have to face in the future. Maybe finances, maybe their job, maybe personal relationships. And that might leave them feeling troubled and afraid. Just like the disciples of Jesus were troubled and afraid the night before his death. But here's what he said to calm them and us. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Yes, there are challenges out there for all of us. There's stress to deal with. There are times where we feel disheartened and discouraged. But the Lord is always with us. Always. And he tells us that we have troubles. We can take to them, take them to him in prayer. As he tells us in that famous psalm, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you'll honor me. That puts us at ease, at peace. During the Second World War, there was a soldier who was critically injured, and two other soldiers were carrying him on a stretcher across an active battlefield. The soldier said, put me down. I'm dying. You men need to return to the fight. They didn't put him down and resume, but and resume the battle at hand. Eventually, the battle subsided. An officer came by and saw this man lying in this pool of blood and asked, is there anything I can do to help you? Want a drink of water? What can I do? No, he said, the only thing I want you to do is go on my pack. you find a Bible there. Open up to the New Testament to the Gospel of John. Find chapter 14. And toward the end of that chapter, you'll see a verse that starts with the word peace. Please read that to me. So the officer complied with the request, got the Bible out of his pack, opened it up to John, and read this verse, which is the verse of our text. He read, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Thank you, kind sir, the dying man said. 
No, I am at peace. I am going to my Savior. Short time later, he breathed his last, departing in peace. We can all live our lives in peace, knowing that the Lord is our Savior and he's always with us. And then someday we can depart in peace. Might you be going to a graduation service today? Or sometime? You'll then hear a commencement speaker. Hopefully you'll be great. But you've heard one today who's even greater. The Lord Jesus Christ. With some great advice, not just for the disciples, not just for the graduates, but for all of us. Show up. Cling to the Holy Spirit's teachings and be at peace. A commencement speaker will tell the graduate, your future is ahead of you. Go forward with a positive attitude. Well, all of us can go forward in life with a positive attitude. Because we have a great future, a heavenly future, thanks to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.